Today's Ask Me Anything goes out to Mary Ulring, who says, any suggestion how to keep my dog from chewing on the seatbelt? Mine has already destroyed one. I mean, don't put your dog in the car. If you know your dog is destroying a seatbelt, you're putting him in a car where the only thing to chew on is the seatbelt. A couple suggestions I can give you is one, put your dog in a crate because chewing on a seatbelt is not only dangerous for your dog, it's dangerous for the next person who's gonna ride in that seat with no seatbelt. Don't let your dog get in the habit of chewing things. You can put some bitter apple on it. You can put some cayenne pepper on it. You can do, you know, I mean, the bitter apple stuff works really great. Um, get them to really hate the bitter apple. Spray a little bit in their mouth first and then spray it on the belt so that the, 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 the mere scent of it or smell of it um, or, or taste of it is going to make it very, very aversive to the dog. Then um, get the, don't let the dog sit in the car and just have nothing to do because that's when they do it. Put your dog in a crate. If your dog is in a car, the dog should be in a crate or should be seat belted in, you know, into a, with, a, with a harness. If you're doing anything else, you're putting your dog at risk. How do you handle three dogs? 12 years, seven years, six months. I'm losing my mind. You're, you, you, you've lost your mind already because there's no way you're going to handle three dogs. Now, I don't know if you're talking about on a leash or at home, but if you have two dogs at home, especially a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old, and you're bringing a six-month-old in, which you probably brought in four months ago, um, and you didn't structure it, you're going to have pandemonium in your house. So in our house, we have more than th three dogs. And um, the reason I keep it in structures, because first of all, Dwayne was always crated. He, was, he learned when he came out, he had to pay attention, he had to, had to listen to me, had to be on, um, had to be on point, had to, had to be focused. And when he wasn't, he went back in the crate. So he got free time um, for the small, short durations he could handle it, and then he went back in the crate, and he learned a lot of training. Janet worked with him a lot. Um, I, by the way, I can't uh, you know, hire out Janet to, to help you, so you're stuck on that one. But um, if there's more than one person in the house, everybody got to have all hands on deck. When, uh, when Jan is not around, I don't have any problem handling three, four, five, six, seven, whatever amount of dogs I would have in my house because I'm in control. I don't yell. I don't get upset. I don't hit, throw stuff or anything like that. I'm very calm with it. I kind of stay in control because the dogs see that if you're in control and you're calm, then you're a lot better owner and you're, the dogs are a lot more likely to respond to you. So the calmer you can keep yourself, the calmer you can keep the environment, the more individual training you can do with each dog, the better it's going to be for you and the better it's going to be for your dogs. So structure, structure, structure is, is, is going to be the best way to help you. Got it. My dog Barton is also a Belgian Malinois and has chewed his harness to bits twice already and I'm still having to wait on a replacement as we speak. His harness isn't too tight or loose. He doesn't chew it when he is in my supervision or even attempts it. But when he is in his room, it's his own room, it's his own room that he gets put in at night. When, okay, so I guess when it can't sleep around me and the room he gets put in when my mother takes care of him for the day when I'm at work. He seems to silently destroy it and in no more than one hour. You just open the door and it slaps you in the face. Like that, right? We can't find a way to get him to cut it out as it doesn't happen in front of us. How do you stop something you don't see happening? Well, you don't even know it's happening. Maybe he's not doing it. Maybe some little uh, pixie is flying into the room and chewing the harness and you think it's him. I don't know how to get through to him. It's gotten to the point that as of this month, he randomly decided to chew a hole in the mattress. Absolutely random. He has chew toys and bones, but he's decided to go after the bed. I don't have enough finances to buy another one and I'm not willing to be a doormat to my dog's mess. Do you have any advice to stop this before it get worse? I'm not sure how much worse it can get. Joseph, first of all, a dog doesn't need his own room. The dog should not be wearing a harness when you're not around. The dog should be in a crate and have structured, you know, two, three, four walks between the time he's in the crate and the time you go. First of all, if you're gone for a long time, I don't know why you got a Malinois. Because Malinois requires stimulation. This is what I tell people when they say, oh, everybody can have a Malinois. No, they can't. Not everybody can have a high drive dog. And it doesn't matter if it's a Malinois, a German Shepherd, a, 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 a Turve, a, 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 a Dutch Shepherd, a Rottweiler, any high drive dog that requires more interaction requires somebody that can give that dog that interaction. It's not a pet. It's not just going to sit around the house and watch Oprah and wait for you to come home. It's not going to happen. 
right? The dog needs to be stimulated. And if it's not stimulated, it will become destructive, like your dog is doing now. Your dog is becoming very destructive because it's not stimulated. It needs a job to do, right? It needs to be hurting. It needs to be playing. It needs to be doing agility or running or something. And you're not giving the dog that. You're locking the dog in a room and the dog is finding a job to do, which is eating its harness, eating the wall, eating your mattress, and etc. So instead of trying to buy a new bed, which you say you don't have the finances to do, I would invest those finances in a crate and put the dog in a crate and get a friend, a neighbor, or somebody to walk your dog a few times a day. That's, that's crucial. If you can't do that, you can't give this dog the proper home, the proper you know, environment to be a dog. This is not a pet. This is a big piece that you've got to understand, that you've got to get this dog the mental stimulation it needs to keep it from becoming more and more destructive. At some point, the dog will self-mutilate, will start chewing its paws, start pulling its fur out, and, and eating its tail, and all these other things. Not a good pet for people who can't give the dog the mental stimulation it needs. It's so important, and people always poo-poo it when I say it, because they think, oh, well, we can have a mal. No, you can't. So get a crate, get the dog mental stimulation, because it's going to need it, or else it's going to destroy more than just you know the the bed he says walk on a loose leash i wish i've got two collies managed to teach them tricks recall etc but i am at a loss to stop them pulling like trains i've read everything on youtube wish someone could help i'm going to help you here alpine i'm going to give you the answer that you don't have and the answer to that question is don't walk the two dogs together to start with, right? You're gonna take each dog independently and train them. Now watch my long line videos, watch my prong collar videos, watch my leash pressure videos. They're all free, they're all on YouTube. If you really desire to join my membership section, that's a great idea too. But they're all available for free, shorter versions are all available for free. And walk each dog independently. It's exactly what I did with Maya and Goofy and it's exactly what I did with Dwayne and Jimmy and Janet and I did with Dwayne and Jimmy. Walk them independently. As soon as you put two or more dogs together, and that's two or more, not three or more, two or more dogs together, they're gonna to start competing with each other, they're gonna start getting wound up, and you're gonna be pulling, they're gonna be pulling you like a sled. So good obedience, you've done all this trick stuff with them, and I think that's all great because it's, it's part of developing a good relationship with you. What you need to do now is teach them to kind of be chill. You will only, 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 only ever do that by developing an independent relationship on the walk with them and that they know you can control them. When they start pulling you, you're out of control, and they're out of control, and they know that. They've got you that, at that point. Don't let them figure that out. Stop today, walk in together, walk them independently, one at a time. Watch, like I said, prong collar video, because you might need to put a prong collar on them, a, um, and my leash pressure video, my long line videos, because those are all components of teaching loose leash walking, and then get them to walk loosely one at a time. Then do it with the other one. You're gonna do you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. It's gonna give you a hell of a lot more exercise. You're gonna be so happy about that. It's gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna be in great shape. You're gonna thank me just for that then slowly start to walk them back together again. But it, there's a, a high probability that they're gonna be pullers because they've been doing it with you for a while and you've gotta, <clears throat> you've gotta kind of embrace your, your inner asshole to be strong enough to correct them for that behavior. Got a question? Ask me anything.